Hello and welcome to episode 88 of Things I Learned from Barry Harris. And today I thought we would talk about um, this one particular movement, which is four minor back to one. So it's something that happens in a lot of different tunes and I thought we would isolate just the spot in uh, a famous standard called Just Friends. So Just Friends is usually played in F, but it, it starts on the four chord, which is B flat. I mean, I think bird with strings is in A flat, So, but, but let's do what normally people play it in. I think Barry plays it with Sonny Stitt in, in A flat too. But let's do it in F, So, which means it starts, the song starts in B flat major, and then goes to B flat minor, and then goes back to F major. So that's the whole beginning. Two measures of B flat major, so we would play B flat major scale up and down. Then two, two measures of B flat minor, which we as Barry people think um, the flat seven dominant or E flat seven in this case. And then back to F major. And the next part usually does, I think it would be like a D flat seven, up and down, but we won't go that far. Let's just stay with the first part. And actually we won't even play the first chord. Let's play the second chord, so we'll pick it up at about bar three. So now what's interesting is this E flat seven going to F major. There are a lot of little connections that we have to learn, but the first thing we should know how to do is all the things that we do on a dominant scale. So the scale in thirds, scale in triads. the scale in uh, chords, and all these are gonna work. The only difference is now we're going to resolve to F major. Like for instance, usually E flat resolves to something in A flat, or if we're thinking in the tritone, it will resolve to something in D. But this E flat seven is gonna resolve to something in F major. So like we have to see little connections between what two notes surround this. So for instance, if we took E flat, uh, or if we take, let's take the flat seven, which is D flat. The flat seven um, is the, the note closest to it for F major would be, would be um, the fifth of the F. So like for instance, if we wanted to do a run starting um, any place and then ending up on this note. So there's one. So I just put in two half steps starting from the three. And then I came up with an important arpeggio for the minor. So <clears throat> the, the, the point of this though is to show you that everything you practice for E flat seven, yes, it should be done to resolve to A flat, but this also can be done to resolve to F major, which is really beautiful. But this goes back to playing with the family. So the family are these four dominants, E flat seven, C seven, F sharp seven, F sharp seven, and A seven. All those are family. So Barry always has us try to play with family first. So that E flat seven is an important one because it's part of this family of those four dominants. And coincidentally, that's where you come up with, if you think about it, that's those four family members, the E flat seven, the C, the F sharp, and the A make up a diminished themselves. So if you think about it, those four notes make up a diminished. And those actually originate um, from, let's say, if we said E diminished, if we took E diminished and we lowered a, a note a half step, you're going to find all four of those dominants. So E diminished lower one note, you got E flat seven. E diminished lower the next note, you got A seven. E diminished lower the next note, you got C seven. E diminished lower the next note, you have uh, G flat seven or, a, or, uh, or um, F sharp seven. So when you do that, then you also have this scale which is the diminished scale that Barry doesn't like when you call it half step, whole step, because he's, he thinks that that's not where it comes from. You have to describe where it comes from. And half step, whole step is just describing the degrees. So anyway, back to the E flat seven. So we have to learn how to do things on E flat seven. So E flat seven, one of the things we do is a chord up. Maybe let's try that one, which is a chord up from the fifth. And then maybe we'll end on the major seven. 
So let's see. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. That's a nice one. Chord up. Let's do the chord up from the third. One, two, three. So here's the four major. Here's the four minor. Nice one, just a chord up. Beautiful. Let's do a chord up from the seven. That's a nice one. So one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one. That's a nice one too. So that's just chords up. What if we do um, some half step rules? So let's start, let's start to create lines using some of the half step rules or pivots. So let's, let's start, um, let's start on the E flat. Let's run up to the, to the fourth. That's a nice one. And then we'll pivot. So we'll start on the, the tonic of the E flat seven. We'll run up to the fourth, put in one half step on the way back, which would be between tonic and flat seven. And we'll do a pivot. So now we say, let's see. There's a nice phrase because we ended. And then I just surrounded the three of the F with the five and the four of the E flat. So let's try that again. Right on my A. How we do it, Lisa? That's a nice one. Uh, let's start on the second, and we'll run up to the fifth. That's a nice one. One, two, three, four. Now, very nice. How about some of the important arpeggios? So the important arpeggios on the dominant or on the root. That's a nice one. So let's do that one. Um, the important arpeggio on the root. So let's try that one. One, two, three, four. So I started it with that and then I did some other things around it. How about the important arpeggio found on the fifth, which would be the um, B flat minor. So let's say. That time I came down the important arpeggio from the fifth, but starting from its fifth. So I said, so I, but I put a half step. That's a nice one. So that's a really nice one. How about if we do the important arpeggio? We'll still, we'll do it from the, I guess, let's try it from the root of the important arpeggio from the fifth. So we'll try it from B flat. Let's come down to B flat. Four. That's nice. That's pretty. That's a really nice one. How about um, the other important arpeggio is from the flat seventh. So maybe we'll do it from the flat seventh. Maybe we'll start on the second. We'll put two half steps. That's a nice one. We'll come down the important arpeggio from the seventh. So let's say. Oh, wait. One, two, three. time I came in on I came in on the third beat so one, two, three, four, one, two, three. very nice also so the idea is I mean I'm just messing around with uh, E flat 7 but you see how important it is to think of E flat 7 running into A flat major which is normal 5 to 1 but then this flat 7 dominant 
running into um, F major instead of A flat. And it all has to do with practicing family first. Barry talks about it all the time. You play with family first. And the family are those four dominants that are connected through that one diminished. So the E diminished or however you want to refer to it. E diminished, D flat diminished, uh, B flat diminished, or G diminished. It's all, all those four dominants come from that diminished. Now, another thing that um, I think uh, Barry used to talk about, <clears throat> see, because Barry likes this. If you think about uh, E flat 7, then you think about this note, which is the fourth, which he likes. But then he said, Franz Elsen, used to, who is the piano player from Holland, who is the, the professor at the conservatory, who's responsible for all those Barry Harris videos going up. Uh, and Franz was the one who was responsible for having Barry go to Holland in the first place. Um, he he liked to play the major seven. So in other words, he would like to play. He liked that major seven sound. Which is really nice too. So if you want to think about that major seven sound, that's nice also. Very pretty sound. But it's funny because when talking to Barry, when you ask him, like, which one do you prefer? He prefers both. He likes to have the option of being able to say um, uh, the four, that, that thinking of, of the, um, I'm sorry, thinking, yeah, thinking of the fourth or thinking of this, which is what um, Franz thinks of as the major seven of that um, B flat minor. That's a pretty sound too. I mean, there's nothing wrong with thinking of it that way, but I, and you can also think of it as uh, B flat minor six. Which is also nice, B flat minor six. Also pretty. So you see how many options you have of just thinking about that four minor going back to the one. And it makes you realize that you know, you don't even have to think about, um, sometimes they talk about the modes. Barry doesn't think about modes, and I don't really know that much about no modes except what I learned in uh, rock music. But um, I haven't had to think about that using all these different ideas. So it's just just something to keep in mind. We talked about, it's, it's a, about 10 minutes of talking about four minor going back to one, but really, when you're in Barry's class, he can talk about four minor to one for hours. Just all the different variations and all the different options that you can try. So it's something to consider. And if you think about it, practicing these little small things, if you're playing, becomes a series of these little small things that you've really put together and really worked on. Uh, your playing is only going to benefit immensely from it. So just something to keep in mind. Anyway, until the next time, uh, have fun practicing your four minor. Thanks.